This video is sponsored by Cricket. Welcome to this video. We have a rainy day, which means I'm gonna whip out my Cricut machine and I'm gonna experiment and play around with paper. Something that I've wanted to do for ages is to make paper flowers and I've never done them before. So let's make some paper flower projects together. For my first flower project, I want to make, so I was thinking, it's my niece's birthday, she's going to be six. I had to double check there. I'm like, when did you become six? It's her birthday next week, she's going to be six. Kids, I mean, they don't appreciate a birthday card. Not that they don't appreciate it, but I mean, a card is a birthday card. To be honest, they open it and they check for the money <laughs> and I don't blame them. So I was thinking, um, I noticed how they're always obsessed with numbers and their age and six and a half and um, I thought it would be fun to make a number like a flower number so instead of giving her a card with her present I was going to make the number six with flowers on it because um, she could hang it up in her bedroom um, or she could I don't know I could even write a little message on the back just saying happy birthday um, but I think it would be more fun than just making her a card. I have never made paper roses, but I did go down a YouTube rabbit hole watching videos of people making paper roses. And one thing that they all seemed to have was quilling tools. I am not experienced with working with paper, so this could be a disaster. But um, they, when they were rolling the paper roses, they all seem to have a quilling tool. I'm sure you could do this with something else, maybe like a skewers or a stick, and you could use that to roll. Um, but if you head to any of the crafty shops, quilling tools are not too expensive. Um, I somehow managed to pick up a pack of them, but you can buy one for like a pound or two pound from most of the crafty shops, so. This size one seemed to be the one that people use the most when I was looking at tutorials online. I also have a little hack that I think I might try, but I'm not sure if this uh, will fit in my drill. I seen a girl put her quilling tool into a drill and <laughs> use the drill to roll her flowers super quick. We will try that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go into the design space and we are gonna find some 3D roses that we can make in different colors. I have paper. Um, oh, this is card stock. I don't know if this might be too thick. So what GSM are you, my friend? I just picked a pack of this. It doesn't say what GSM it is. It's just like A4 colored card, 100 sheets. It's not paper thin. It has a bit of weight to it. So that is what I'm gonna use. Oh, this is pretty. Hello. So this is pretty cardstock. Oh, double-sided. So yeah. Oh, we got some stripey as well. So yeah, I actually think I got this online. So I might use some of this to make some of the flowers or we can use it in another project. That's quite fun. Okay, let's go into design space. Okay, we're in design space. Open up a blank canvas. Let's go to the left hand side and we're gonna click on the images, little icon here. I've already been searching for 3D paper rose. I'm sure you could search for paper rose or some other things, but I'm gonna show you some tricks to find similar things. So I tried, uh, I typed in 3D paper rose and here are some paper roses and different actually paper flowers have kind of come up. I think this yellow one here is ranuncula. Very pretty because I cannot grow ranunculus in my garden. <laughs> so I may as well do paper ones. Um, I'm sure if you got a bit more specific, maybe paper, not specific, broad. If you typed paper flower, you might get more. I like this 
purple one here because I think it has lovely shapes. See the three dots? You can click the three dots. It gives you the code, uh, the design number I think this is, but you can click view similar and then view image sets, add to collection and then you can report it as well if you don't like it. Um, so I'm gonna go view similar images so this you can do with any image in design space that I've noticed and it'll bring up similar. So it's bringing me up this lovely pink rose. Here's another, that looks like a bit more, oh, that's a giant 3D rose. Okay, I'm gonna bookmark that and save that for later. And then I've also saved this one. So you can just bookmark your favorites in the bottom right hand corner. And actually there's an idea using felt. I'm not sure if I have any felt in my crafty stash, but this is what happens. <laughs> Ideas just keep growing. So you can scroll down and you can see there's loads of paper flower designs there. So like I always say, you can kind of spend ages. <laughs> That's also a nice paper flower. Not for this project that I'm doing, but I'm still gonna bookmark it. Um, you can also create a collection. So I'm not gonna do that now, but I probably should create a collection for paper flowers. This looks like a lovely simple flower as well. Actually, that would be a nice cherry blossom. We're gonna save you for later. So I'm gonna, oh, there's a daffodil. I am sorry, I have the attention span of a goldfish. There's a daffodil, I am saving that. I wonder how hard it is to me. Okay, now we're gonna scroll back up. I'm gonna go with this purple flower. I like how it has petals. So I'm gonna click it, sorry, click it. And then I'm gonna add it to the canvas and it's going to be squiggly. And then I'm gonna show you how to put it together. So we can resize this to the size that we want. And see the center part here. Um, when I was looking online, people were saying the final size of your flower will be roughly the size of this center here. So even though this is saying, you know, 29 centimeters for this whole um, design, if you actually just measure here, this is what your final flower is going to be. Now, I also want to make the number six, but because I haven't made a flower before, I'm just gonna make one just to see um, about, you know, the sizing. I'm gonna go decent sizes. I don't want them too small because if I do them too small, I'm gonna have to make loads more. <laughs> so I'm gonna go somewhere around here. So I'm gonna go to make it and I'm gonna set up, I think my machine is set up. So it's giving me green for the petals and then you can also change the color. So I have a mat for my petals and I have a mat for this. And then just a little tip, material size, um, you can change it to A4. So the paper I have is A4. So if you need to change it on the mat, um, because if you don't change it, your design might, your machine might think that you have a big piece of paper on your mat and you may end up cutting flowers that aren't fitting on your piece of paper. So you can change the material size to A4. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click continue and I'm gonna select my material as cardstock, load up my machine with the right blade and we're gonna cut it and then we're gonna make our first flower just as a little experiment before I do the full project. Let's roll our first flower. I've just realized that I actually have a Cricut tweezers, which I could probably use instead of a quilling tool. So if you do have any of the sets, um, cause I think this came in a, set, in a set with some other tools. So if you have this and you never use it, like me, <laughs> I think this would work. When looking at the tutorials online, this is what the rose looks like. This is quite big, but let's see how small it rolls up. We start on the outside and we roll it towards ourselves. And they say that on this first piece, to make sure that you roll it really 
tightly. I'm gonna try it with the tweezers. Actually, no, I'm gonna try it with this one. So everyone said to pop your quilling tool in really close to the edge and then roll it towards yourself and roll it really tightly. Some of the tutorials said not to worry if it goes slightly off center because you can squish it in the end. I also seen a tip that said wear a glove um, if you are doing a couple of these because you might get some paper cuts. So that might depend on, okay, I'm getting towards the end and I'm going a little bit off kilter, but that's all right. So this round piece is where you glue your flower to. So I'm gonna take out my quilling tool. <laughs> my rose is looking a bit wonky, but I'm going to let it Oh, open up and try and flatten it. The same level, if that makes sense. So they're nice and flat and I've loosened it out a bit so that it fits on this base. I'm just gonna grab some glue, a glue stick. I'm so excited. So my glue has just set for my first rose. Um, I I think it looks really good. A little bit fiddly to start and then I, I managed to get it, but that looks really good. <laughs> now, for the little petals, I'm gonna glue them all to the base, but I just wanted to share that when you see any petals or leaves where the, let's see if I can zoom in here. So when you see that there's a slit here, um, you're supposed to fold it so that you get a petal that's um, a bit more 3D. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to put a bit of glue there and then I'm gonna close it in. I'm just gonna hold it for a second and then that's when you get that petal shape. And what I'll do is I'll stick it in there. So there is my first paper flower. I think I may use a different glue. The Pritt stick glue, I'm just with my fingers and getting a couple of glue marks on the top of the petal. So I think I might see if I can have a PVA glue in my stash, but delighted with this for my first rose. ahead and I made some more paper flowers and I made some smaller ones just so I had more of a variety of sizes. I'm also going to share this project in the design space community so if you want you can just click it. I'll share a link in the description where you can find me and you can also follow along over there and you'll find this project and some of my previous ones as well. morning I hope you can hear me I've got my headphones in I'm looking for twigs I'm currently in the forest and I'm foraging off the floor to see if I can get some twigs so we can make a cherry blossom tree and stick the papers on it but oh I broke my twig I liked this one because it has lots of moss on it 
sorry i'm not used to vlogging on my phone um so yeah let me turn my camera i thought this would be the best place to come to try and find some twigs but i'm just kind of foraging off the forest floor and i only need i think like one or two decent sized ones like there's that's just some dead ivy so yeah i'm having a little forage to see if i can get a nice oh ho, ho, ho. here is some fallen branches yeah maybe something like this i did have a look in my own garden i really should have brought my like snips with me and um, i did have a look in my own garden and i didn't have loads so yeah this, this is what i'm doing this morning i am foraging oh you look good oh yes we have a nice bit of length in this one riveting content i know but the hunt there's some broken um twigs over there as well so yeah this is what i'm at this morning so once i was happy with my twig selection from the woods i brought them back and i just gave them a little haircut with my garden snips and assembled them in the vase until i could kind of get a shape that i wanted ideally i probably should have done this in the living room on the mantelpiece and um, to see what it was going to look like but because it was a bit of a messy job i did it outside in the garden i didn't have any pink paper but I do notice that just from having cherry blossom trees in the garden that there can be different shades of pink. So I decided to whip out some red and white paint. Now, if you have watercolors, this would be much better. Um, I couldn't find my watercolor set, so I just mixed red and white acrylic paint together and I added water to get a nice watery um, wash and then I just use the paintbrush to wash over the paper and this paper is actually quite thin it's a bit thinner than the other paper I'm using I think this is just normal um, photocopying paper uh, but I still got the nice pink effect so yeah take this idea if you too have no pink paper for your cherry blossoms so we are back on our blank canvas I'm going to go into images and we're going to find that nice cherry 3d cherry blossom that I had yesterday. So here it is, I have it bookmarked, but it popped up straight away. I'm gonna add this to my canvas and I need to make loads of these. <laughs> okay, these look nice and simple. I'm gonna double click them and I'm gonna click duplicate. I will also save this as a project and I can share it um, on my like Cricut profile and you can just open this up and make it straight away. So you can also click make it to see how many you can kind of fit on your canvas. So it's gonna sort them into one for the yellow, one for the pink. So yeah, I can fit loads on this and then don't forget to resize because I am still gonna be cutting on A4. So yeah, I can get loads of cherry blossom petals by the looks of this on the one piece. So I'm just gonna click cancel and I'm just gonna keep duplicating these until I have loads on my canvas. The more cherry blossoms, the merrier. And once I have these all on my canvas, I wanna click make. I'm gonna follow the steps like in the previous project where I put my paper onto the light grip mat and I let it cut. And then we have the fun part, which is assembling. I decided to kind of tweak 
the design. So these cherry blossom scented design space, they come in three parts. You've got a large petal, a smaller petal, and then you have the uh, stems for, not the stems, the stamens, is it? I should notice being a flower person <laughs> for the inside. I decided to make this easier. I was going to mix and match the larger petals and the smaller ones and stick them directly onto the tree. I didn't stick them to each other to make a really full cherry blossom. Um, I was just conscious of, I didn't know if I'd have enough paper uh, to do it. So you can tweak this to suit you if you have the time and the paper. Assembling all of the cherry blossoms together with the stems would look absolutely amazing and very detailed. But if you're like me, and you were not sure, uh, you can just take this idea, separate the petals and stick them on. And I love the contrast of the smaller cherry blossoms with the bigger ones. Um, I just think it gives it a bit of dimension. I'm obsessed with this. Now, I I could do more twigs, definitely. Hang on, I need to pop up here before I break it. I have seen cherry blossom, so UFO cherry blossom trees, but they are very spendy, very expensive. So if you do have a go at making a little cherry blossom tree, because they are short lived. I have one in the garden and it's like, it flowers around about February time. It's like one of the first ones to flower. And then I do see some, but you only get about three, four weeks and then they're gone. So we have petals. All season long now. If you have any tips on the paper crafts because I am a paper newbie but I'm absolutely chuffed with myself that I have made cherry blossoms and I've managed to make a rose as well. I definitely think I want to do, I seen someone on YouTube do a paper bouquet and it was actual like it was a box um, that they put together and assembled and then they assembled an actual bou bouquet but I think um, definitely allow yourself some time to do that because um, I think it might take about two or three hours. The roses were really quick to make. You can make the roses in like a like few minutes per rose. Um, and the cherry blossoms, I tweaked that design. So the small petals are supposed to be glued to the big petals but because there's so many to fill in. I decided to use them separately and I also didn't use the little stems but I was thinking I could go in with a little makeup brush with some yellow paint and just do tiny dots in the middle for detail. Um, also you can use crepe paper. Um, apologies for that noise. My neighbours are having some work done so I think that's the noise of a roof tile getting cut. Yeah, you can do paper cherry blossoms with crepe paper and tissue paper, um, but I wanted to work with something just a little bit thicker, um, especially when I don't have as much experience with the paper because I didn't want it to tear. Um, so if you are a newbie like me, maybe try the thicker paper so you have less tears. Anyway, cheeky thumbs up if you like my cherry blossom and my roses, and I will see you in the next video.